So my parents bought me my first guitar, which was a nylon string acoustic, and then I moved up to the steel string acoustic, which was a fake ovation. It was the applause. Oh series, yeah, right? yeah, yep. So I had that, and then I wanted. Jamie Ridener had one of those. Did he? Okay. I wanted a electric guitar, right? And I, I you can't the, rock with an acoustic the, one, guitar. The old Italian guys that I took lessons from had a Memphis there that I wanted, and my parents wouldn't get it for me. So, um, but they did buy me a Bill Lawrence sound hole pickup that I put inside wow. of the applause. Okay, of course I didn't have anything to plug it into. I didn't yeah, think that yeah, far yeah. ahead. So they had Holmes amps. Do you remember those? Solid state, really I think terrible. So, yeah. So I wanted to get one of those because it was the only thing I knew. So your parents <clears throat> bought the pickup? Right. Not at your request? No, I, I said I wanted an electric guitar. And I guess they talked oh, to the teacher and he, like, he said, well, if you're not going to buy an Next a, best electric, thing. Yeah. yeah, okay. But right, they didn't right. buy me an amp. So I was like, yeah. mm. So I had a, Holmes. I got a old CB radio that had a PA function and I took I, we had these speakers for our stereo that were in our basement, and I took one of those speakers, and I hardwired it to the PA. That's badass. I took the mic, the the like Smokey and the Bandit yeah. M4 mic, and the first thing I did was I just bu I busted it open, and I found the microphone contacts, and I just hardwired the Bill Lawrence pickup that? into that. How did you know how to do that? I, I knew a little bit about electronics. That's I was crazy. I was doing a little. That's cool. But I, in order to get it to work, I had I taped the button down okay right so it's so i've got this you know cb microphone with duct tape around it with wires going <laughs> in the side where i melt i didn't drill it i melted a hole in it with a soldering iron <laughs> and i was playing that and i was trying to get in bands and it was you know freshman year in high school and this guy marino olivieri was a drummer i remember the name went to his house and playing and he's like that's what you're gonna play with, and I was like so embarrassed. I mean, it was the oh worst. Oh my god, dude, chill. It's a Radio Shack, you know, little CB radio with all these wires coming out of it into the stereo speaker and playing. Marino wasn't having it. No, and his brother had like the Kramer and all this nice stuff. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so like, I had a paper route, and I was saving up. So I so saved. You can up. tell you had some talent. I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't know. So, wow. and that that whole year was terrible anyway. But talking about how i don't know i didn't ever know about things that year i did learn about van halen because that's when um 1984 came out so i did have that on re album in fact i still have it right in there oh snap i i couldn't play any of that stuff i listened to it and i liked it but I, it wasn't something that that what that resounded with me at all like yeah. like i can play yeah. that because i knew it wasn't anything i could do but so saved up my money worked my paper route mowed lawns bought my Ibanez, and then shortly thereafter, a what PV What did you have? RS-440. It was a Strat with a humbucker and two singles. Single, single. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that weird Ibanez yes. tremolo? Yeah, yes. okay. Locking right. tremolo yeah. that was just so difficult to use. And that was your Allen first wrenches. pro guitar? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then um, PV Renown 400. 212, Dude. 210 watts of terrible, not Here's good the deal. sounding... Solid state power. PV Renown was the amp mm -hmm. when I was whatever. Right. And that's what I was. I but was I don't 14, know why, 15 when I But I, I do know why. Because it cost like Chris Contros uh, played one. Did he really? See, Absolutely. I didn't know that. Absolutely. I did and, not know And that. here's the deal. And I don't know if you knew this, but the band that Chris Contros was in that was so influential on me called, um, I, I, I'll think of it here in a minute, but it was him and... Ken Jones. Oh, really? Dakota, Dakota. Jones. Ken he Dakota was the Jones. he was the rhythm guitar player in that right. band. And they I didn't realize had, they were in a band together. They either. were in a band okay. together, and they both had PV Renowns. Hmm. And it was, I, I'd never talked about that with either of them. Yeah, and that's you weird. need to. It's yeah. really it's really pretty dramatic because again, right, who knows, right? It was well, like, that was like a no. It wasn't the the Skinner amp was the Mace or something like that. But this it was a yeah. Shitty, they were PV guys, right? Skinner was PV. Yeah, guys. yeah. It was the Renown, and, and to yeah. me, it was like that was the sound. Like I had to get a PV Renown to have that sound. But but yeah. yeah. But it was totally because of Chris Contras. Who yeah. had a Renown? I didn't know that. So. Fast forward a few years from that. So I bought that, like I said, with my paper route and mowing lawn money. Who told you to get a Renown? 
the guy at LaSalle Music in East Hartford. Mm. He said, he, he said, what's your budget? And I said this, and he said, what do you want? I said, I want a rock amp that's loud. And I, he says, this one in there. I remember him saying, this will rip your face off. That's how loud it is. <laughs> and I remember specifically Two twelves, man. But a few years later, so I bought that in 85, I guess. A few years later, I said, well, I'm going to, my friend Larry called me and said, no, we need a bass player. I was like, well, I don't have a bass or an amp. So you had no aspirations towards bass at this None. point. And this was 80, 88, I guess I was a senior. He says, yeah, but he says, I know you used to play some acoustic stuff where you'd play some bass lines while you were playing chords at the same time. So he kind of knew you so he said, probably understood yeah. it. And I said, all right. And I, so I, bar I borrowed a bass wow. from a friend and I said, but I don't have a bass amp. I said, but... That renowned 400's got 210 watts and 212's, uh, should, right? Should work, right? So, for a few months, that I was, was in off limits. Was that that you was the band, right that now? was the first bit wow. band I ever played? So Mid range Ford kind of so Lemmy kind of vibe. We were that's when we were practicing in this old furniture warehouse that this old Italian guy Subby Bazzini rented out the basement and then his whole back building out to bands and all the bands like slightly a generation before me or whatever had built all these little rooms in yeah. there out of you know plywood and all this stuff so there were these good sized rooms and tons of there was like at its zenith there were probably 14 bands there um <laughs> kegs girls i mean this was if you played music and you lived in central connecticut this that's is where place. you wanted to be and that's where i rented space and it was the most awesome what experience. Is there a subby yeah, I guess it was Sebastian was his name, maybe, like but it. we called him Subby. This was an odd story, too, but he knew I was Polish because every time i go to pay him the rent, he'd say, my my bookie, he's Polish, too. He's in Buffalo. Eddie Wesneski. You know him? He'd always ask me if I knew him. Because <laughs> all, all Polish people apparently. know each other, right? <laughs> but he thought my name was Matt Stiletto. Oh, that's kind of badass. I think I'm going to adopt. I've never Absolutely. adopted it as my stage name, but maybe he called as and he'd write my And I probably still have one somewhere, but he'd write my receipt he had these, these crappy stiletto? little and it would always say matt stiletto you know it was 120 bucks a month or something we paid for this room <laughs> um but that's when we were right next door to a guy named peter kitts oh. who turns out his real name was rivers cuomo and he's actually the guy from weezer Dang, but that's so crazy. um he was and then we used to talk about stuff and he wouldn't remember me from anybody but we had their room well, I actually he would the, i don't know if he would but their room didn't have heat he might remember me for this. Oh. Our room had heat, so they'd be practicing, and they'd all come in with their scarves and their mittens and to all this stuff. To warm up a minute. And they'd come in. Our, our room was like <laughs> part of. It used to be an office, so we had heat, and we had refrigerators and a lot of people hanging out. So they'd come in and warm up, and then we got to talking. And he he says, "Oh, I heard you like progressive rock," and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." He's like, "Oh, I like Jason Becker and all that." And I'm like, "Oh, really? I'm like, I don't know who See, that, that is." I mean, I had me no out. idea who that was. And, but I mean, I'm like, no, I'm like, King, I'm talking about King Crimson. We had a, yeah. we weren't talking the same language. Right, yeah. right. But yeah, at the time he was a metal, he was a prog in a progressive metal band. But how do you spell so, Kits? K I T T S. K I T T S. Oh, got okay, that. all right. Got, there's no Z. That's the. I've got some of their old cassettes here somewhere. But but so we were renting that place, and the renown blew out the speakers. So I said, well, with the bass, of course. Oh yeah, yeah. So it say. didn't take long, maybe a month, and. So they're like, "Hey, we got we're gonna, we're going to have gigs soon." That's what they said. <laughs> and so you got to get a, you got to do something here. So I went out and I bought a 115 PV, of course. Yeah. So the Renown sat up on top of the 115 and then so the speakers are blown. Speakers are blown and so you got the 212 and then the 115s. Those speakers are blown, so I just wired it down into that cabinet and out, you know, you directly. Go. And then the head eventually toasted. So I went and I bought an acoustic mm. uh, acoustic research whatever you want to call it, acoustic it was one of those, they, they made it for a very short time. It had, the, it, much like Trace Elliott, it had the light up front panel, oh. graphic EQ. It lit up blue. It was really cool looking. Um, collaboration series, it was called. B, B2, I think, was the model. It, it sounded great. It looked cool. Um, it had a 15. The 15 was like at a 45 degree angle. And it had this, it was <laughs> called a Carlson, it. Carlson's with a K, K A R. L L S O N or S S O N I don't know. It had a weird baffle in the front, like it was it was shaped like it came it came down like this, and the speaker was down here. Like it had a lot of projection. It sounded great, and it was really loud for a couple hundred watts. It was a fairly was compact for combo. Volume or for? I bought it because it was cheap. But no, I mean like what was? Uh, you think you know the science behind what I, they were I, trying to do? 
Was that more of a done. mid-range thing? Because I feel like you had to have a taste for mid-range, which yeah. I feel like you kind of do now, even. Yeah. Uh, based on the renowned days where you were, <laughs> you were trying to, like... But anyway, it sounded worlds better than yeah, playing okay, through good, the renown. Good. And unfortunately, then we moved from that back building, because you shut that down, into the front building with the rest of the band. So there was, like, four or five of us bands in that back building, and then Subby got pissed and closed that building down totally. So then a vacancy Subby. came up in the other building. We rented a room over there. And six months later or so, somebody came in, cut through the wall. I mean, we had, like, locks and metal bars and stuff. Uh, they cut through the no. walls and stole, like, all my stuff was gone. The my Ibanez acoustic? bass, the acoustic was gone. Every, yeah, They left my one my 115 PV cabinet. Um, mm. They left the guitar player's carbon amp. I didn't like carvings, I guess. I was going to say, why? And I had that Ibanez 880 four-string bass. It was white. It was very cool. So in your mind, at that point, were you a bass player? No. Okay. I was still a guitar player that was subbing on bass. And really, another two years went by when I lived up there, 89, 90, more, more like four years. I still played almost exclusively guitar after that because that band kind of fell apart. I bought a P bass with a mirror pick guard. It was a Japanese, really, I mean, it was a nice, well-crafted Japanese P bass, early 80s, late 70s. Mirror pick um, guard. Mirrored pick guard is what it had. It was black and, yeah. But um, used that for a while um, in that band, and then everything kind of fell apart. So then I just went back to guitar. I think I got rid of that bass eventually. And, yeah, it, until I came here, when I came down here, I was still thinking of myself as a guitar player. In fact, I had no bass, no bass amp. Yeah, when I, moved when I first met you, you were a guitar player. He had a Steinberger. I had a Mesa Boogie. I had a Steinberger. I had that Yamaha that I still have today. And then Mudfish Jones, Dave McCoy, said, hey, we need a bass player. And I said, okay. And then at the same time, Melanie McMillan approached me, said, hey, we need a bass player. So everybody was approaching me like about playing bass. within the first year you moved here, that happened? Or Probably, or yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I was playing... Why in a couple other approach? projects with other people on guitar. I don't know. I, I can't remember if I... You had a bass I, vibe about you? May, I must have. And then, so I didn't have a bass. And so I borrowed one from Sean Moore, Hippie Sean. Okay. What did he Actually, buy? I borrowed two. I borrowed, he had a PJ, a Fender PJ, which he still plays. And he had a Spectre, a real Spectre oh, that was nice. Wow. It was. It had some problems. I think it was... The bridge was all seized up like it needed to a new bridge and it need, so it played but it didn't play real good. Right. So that's what I started playing in those bands. And then my buddy Mike back home said he had two carbon fretless basses. He had a four string and a five string. Both were koas. And I said I'll buy the five string because he said I don't really play the five. So he shipped it down to me. I, I can't remember Mike. I'm sorry, but I, maybe it was three hundred and fifty <laughs> bucks or three. It was inexpensive it was in great shape and that thing made me a ton of money over the, I, that was the only base i owned for at least oh, 10 years i remember years. that base yeah. yeah at least 10 years until i bought that six string ibanez after that but great investment and i had that uh trace elliott head and a trace elliott 410 and that was my well, there's something there and i think years. don't don't not to rush past yeah. that that fact that you were the guy who did both like, I don't know anybody who, who fits that category in all my entire life. Yes, if you're a guitar player, you can play bass in a rock band. because. Mm -hmm. But to be an actual bass player... Who's actually well, a guitar player too? That was a, that's not. There's debate about that. Whether I mean, well, I mean, no, no, there isn't, and we'll see. Yeah, and again, is. on this on this series, hopefully, we'll get to see some of that thing because, you know, I've done my own music and played bass on production stuff, but it's not a guitar with less strings. It is nope. a whole different thing. Of course, anybody yeah. who's, who's, and it, I probably didn't approach it like that at first. Like, well, I, I don't know. I, the more I listen to even that off limits stuff. That tape, I was like, man, I actually kind of did approach it like a bass. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah. Then again, I've been accused of being way too busy and all that stuff too. So, which is probably comes from being a guitar player. But, but I think your style, it is, which style, has evolved yeah. into mm -hmm. that, is because you were straddled. Right, that right, line, probably you know? so. Very, very cool. Probably so. Cool. Which has gotten me derision and fired from gigs and not hired for other gigs. But I mean, I do what I do, and that's that's all there is to it. And 
no apologies and you know yeah. i mean if you want to hire somebody that just plays the root root fifth all day long that's not me so never there gonna be go. there you go i can't i'd rather not play you know <laughs> and very unique and i think that's what the what hopefully we will be exploring on yep. this thing is is this kind of unique palette that's been given to both of us that are like okay this yeah. is not your normal thing but like let's let's make it happen and i think out of that has grown out of that idea that everything isn't boiled down to a thing right it's like a palette has grown this love for photography and videography mm -hmm. as well because like you know we we've been talking about this what what are we going to do with this channel what's the the thing and one of those youtube videos we watched that said no you got to do this so you have to do one thing which got me kind of like oh, oh yeah but we love lots of different things and the and the idea is we've got this weekend warrior mentality of like hey we've got the weekends to do some creative stuff what are we going to do there's a lot of stuff a lot of territory to cover right it feels like it's not going to be just about music. It feels like it's not going to be just about videos, photography. There's going to be other stuff that we bring. Like you said in. there's a story it, attached. I love yeah, that. As long as there's, there's, to me, as long as it's something interesting, as long as there's a, a, some kind of backstory. And we're not going to be worried about really staying within the confines of this is what it is. And, this is, and, and hopefully we won't get too far, whereas... No one would be interested, but I think right. there, a lot of people, hopefully, have the same kind of thing where I'm, I'm not just interested in one thing. Right. I want to see people exploring different creative outlets, and and that's what we do. We're not just interested in one thing. I mean, even well, though the, the underlying story, I think, for both of us is music, and that kind of drives us to a lot of things. But visual arts too are 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 very important to me. Well, and, to me, it even boils down to even more simple than that it's creativity mm -hmm. i had a guy tell me one time and it sounds kind of corny saying it but it really made an impact on me and has and it stuck with me i asked him he was doing a video thing of something i was doing and it was just because he wanted to do it like i and i, I couldn't figure it out i was like what the heck like why and so i asked him i was like why are you doing this because we were spending the whole day doing this thing have you seen that video of the tail with mm -hmm. me and gavin Dude, you're gonna lose it. not the Pretty hair. Gavin's and the beach. long hair. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, on the beach, it was uh, it was where the Civic Center is now. Oh okay. I, I, I'm like picturing it being on the or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That thing. The guy who was videoing that. I thought you guys videoed. No, no, no. Oh. He you approached me and said. Where, where is that? I know you've showed it. I know it's on YouTube somewhere. Is it? I I think you maybe and maybe. I not. think we need to own that and just like put it in mm -hmm. there. But, but anyway, I asked him. I was like, well, Why are you doing this? He said, Because I'm a creative, and either I create or I die. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, wow, there it is, you know? And, and I think that's what this is about, like exploring creativity. And of course, yeah, we want to, it would be nice to have everything in a box and mm -hmm. say, okay, we're music guys or whatever. But I think well, there and are we don't have who, the time to write up that and, and have a right. script and right. have all, I mean, it's got, it's got to be kind of, this is what I thought about this week. This is what I thought about this right. week. I mean, yeah. And we got to believe that that is relatable. And I think it is, you know, but whatever. And if it's relatable to ten people, so be it. You yep. know, like let, I think that that's the thing. We're gonna we're gonna explore that idea. We're gonna create something. Like, what did you create this week? Uh, well, I mean, I didn't ha I didn't sit down with my guitar much, but I created this nope. thing with my drone. Right. Cool. All right. All right. At least yeah. you're, you're moving forward. You know. And I think we've got some some good ideas about stuff that, that's that's music based, that's photography based, that. Some of the stuff I haven't seen other people do. Maybe they're doing it, maybe they aren't, and we're just not hip enough to know what everybody's doing. But I, we're definitely not. But, yeah, I think it'll be of interest to some, at least. And, and I know I need it because the last, you know, since 2016 is, is when I kind of stopped gigging. I think I haven't even had a gig since 2017. So in wow. just going coming from, I don't know, eight, ten gigs a month, even as old as I was at that point, to, to nothing. And then, you know, prior to that, you know, playing every weekend for God knows how many years and, you know, weeknights, even after work. And But the older I got, that tapered off. But. And for me, you know, it was a little different narrative, but the thing of, like, an identity problem, an identity issue where, like, I that was, in my mind, Again, going back to high school, when all that went down, that was the only thing I had to offer. 
So I had to be that or I'm nothing. That's always been me too. Yeah, in a way, yeah. And it's not true, but like you, that's a powerful story running in the back of your head all, mm-hmm. at all times. And so when I kind of hit a wall where it was like, okay, I have to stop identifying myself as this. Hmm. It was real hard, and it, it was like a reckoning. You know, like everything had to. I had to uh, to reevaluate my entire life. I feel like if, well, if you did. I hadn't done that, my marriage would have failed, and that was definitely a, a, very close to being reality. <laughs> but it was this thing of like, well, all right, I gotta reevaluate who I am and what what I am about, and then out of that creativity will spring and that's what has happened and that's why this is so exciting to me personally is because it's like all right an exploration of creativity not a this is who i am yeah and i'm not the corporate nine to five guy either but there's something that's all of it mixed together you know it's all these things that kind of come together and make an interesting i don't know an interesting thing to share with people and and again as you know as parents of children you know being able to share that with them and and show them you know reality uh, right what we would love what we what we desire to do and what you know what our struggles have been those kind of things have hopefully going forward we will be able to create some cool stuff i think i think so man i think just even yeah, the stuff we've so. been doing lately and just you know like this like this idea of uh, you know this light right here that's lighting us up is a brand new that we both been kind of like trying to talk about stuff, and then Matt pulled the trigger and bought this really cool giant light. I may or may not a have a couple way. LED panels coming in this uh, week too. Uh, what? <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, it's just, just, it's just exciting, you know, to kind of explore this stuff, and hopefully, you know, it's it, this isn't pedantic, right? We're not right. trying to teach nope. anybody how to do a thing because I don't know how to do anything to teach. We're just talking about stuff yeah exploring what it means to to us i mean really right. exactly I mean, there's no exactly and i think that that you resonates have to do that, none of that right yeah. and i think it resonates because i think a lot of people want permission to just explore creativity without having to have it mean a thing nope and we're not you know professing to be experts in in any of this stuff i mean i heard i i, I something resonated with me this week that i th- wanted to share that I, I felt like what we are are dime store polymaths. Could be. Is that is that yeah, like, is that yeah, resonate yeah. with you like like dime like dime store polymath. Like it's this like we love all this stuff. We mm-hmm. have some some interest and some knowledge in a lot of different things, but it's not n- never is it gonna be this perfected thing. That's, that's almost okay, a good name dude. for the channel, isn't it? Right, right. <laughs> I mean for real. Yeah. There's little expertise but lots of uh passion for things and in um hope to get better at a lot of these things and, right and, just, and why why are we getting better it's not because it's a big career move no. it's because we love to create art you mm-hmm. know and I, and I think that is that's valuable yep and it's super bowl sunday and we're so stoked about football i right? couldn't be more excited <laughs> it, the, i am excited because i'm making wings and then i'm making uh bang bang tater tots I don't know what that is. It's going to be but good. It sounds fantastic. Are you doing something? Are you are people coming over no, or no, anything? No, no. Nope. You're just doing it because you want to do it. Yeah. Again, that's going to be part of this thing. You you mentioned that. I don't have any cooking skills whatsoever, but you do. Yeah, and that's going to be that. part of the thing. Yeah, I, I think that would be cool. I, again, it might be something that people tune out because they're like, oh, what's this? They're, I thought it was music and art. Now the guy's cooking. I mean, I, I don't think so. I think I people like us are going to be like, that's freaking rad, you know? Mm-hmm. So what are you, are you going to watch even? No. Okay. <laughs> Typically we go to my sister's and That's what I thought. until halftime, we watch the halftime show and then go home. Um, if you had asked me five days ago, is the Super Bowl this weekend? I wouldn't have even yeah, been able to yeah. tell you. So yeah, I have no, no idea. I, I, hadn't I paid honestly attention. have no idea who's playing today, Well, which I don't know if that needs to be revealed, but yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure myself, but. Not a big football or sports fan. So. That's went, one thing I don't have a lot of passion about. <laughs> oh, man, for real. I went to pick up that desk today, and when I got to the guy's house, there was a uh, the the girl who Anna, uh, Heather was talking to came out and was like, "This is this this," because they had it on the porch. 
And she's like, my husband, I think, is coming to help you somewhere. He's, I think, I'm going to get his shoes. And he comes around the corner, and he's like, just like a like a bow, you know, mm-hmm. not in a bad way, just he's like that kind of guy. And so, so we're picking up this desk, and we're taking it in my truck, and I'm like, all right, how how do you communicate? So how do you? So I'm like. The football, like, mm-hmm. so you ready for football today? Like, I said that even. I was what? like, what? And wow. he was like, and he even was like, uh, I mean, I'm not really, hadn't really watched a lot this year because it's a weird year anyway. But, um, but I was thinking that's, you know, I, I'm just not that guy. Yeah. I can, I will never be that guy. That's why I can't be a salesman too, because you have to, if you're a salesman, you have to know about sports. And I just, I fall off the cliff with that stuff. Ugh. People start talking about it, and I'll gl- my eyes glaze over. I just have no that's idea. That's probably why you and I, that's probably the, one of the main reasons why you and I have become mm-hmm. such bros is that one thing. I know there's a lot of musicians that I actually respect a lot sure. that, that, are, that, that love are sports guys, yeah, but I've, I just don't get it, nope. dude. I cannot nope. get it. Mm-mm. I can't. I can't do it. But bang, bang, tater tots. Looks cool. What is a bang, bang, tater tot? You know, it's like, the bang bang shrimp seasoning, but on tater tots. Okay. So yeah, snack food that's so you Asian take pre-made vaguely, tater tots. Vaguely Asian, yeah. Okay, you're not making your own. Well, tater tots. and the recipe I found was to fry them. I'm not going to fry them. I'm going to bake them, or actually, I'll probably do them on the the egg with the the wings. But big green egg. Yep. Mm. That's good stuff. And then salad. That's well, our of course that's our dinner. Salad, right. Well, good, man. This has been good. I think it's been valuable. I think this hopefully will help clarify what we're trying to do here. Yeah, we, can we are trying to figure it out in real we time. Are. You know what this is, and who knows? Music, drones, photos, film, digital. Wow, this is good, man. So.